yesterday. It's real good. I am Steve today. Hassan, and I'm absolutely delighted to uh, have on with me a new colleague and friend, a Russian immigre journalist uh, who's kindly allowed me to call her Cassie. And your name is pronounced? Uh, Ksenia. 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 But I admit it's hard for Americans to pronounce this man. So let's use Casey. Yes, Cass mm. Casey. Mm -hmm, okay. So, and we're going to attempt to keep it short and even maybe help out with some uh, subtitles uh, for, mm. for, with your accent to make sure everyone can yeah. understand everything, if mm -hmm. that's okay with you. Sure. So, um, when we first communicated, you were interested in my book, The Cult of Trump, mm -hmm. and uh, you shared some of your articles where you connect Putin's mm -hmm. propaganda techniques and Trump's mm -hmm. propaganda techniques. You kindly did an interview with me, and I asked you to mm -hmm. please do an interview with me. And mm -hmm. so, um, what would you most like to say to my audience? Most of my mm -hmm. audience are former cult members, mm -hmm. researchers, and in people interested in mind control and propaganda. Mm -hmm. What's going on right now with, with uh, Vladimir Putin, with uh, disinformation campaigns and, and, uh, and, and, and Trump and the United States, please. What are your thoughts? Yes. Uh, thank you for for inventing this uh, here, and uh, it's really it's an honor for me uh, to speak with you. I read your book in the Russian <laughs> version of it uh, fifteen years ago. Wow! And uh, yes, because for me, as uh, for a representative of new generation. Uh, probably from a short period when Russia was a relatively free country. For me, of course, it was important uh, to see that uh, people uh, make the choice consciously. Uh, because I don't uh, judge any kind of cho choice. Mm -hmm. But for me, the main problem was that sometimes people were uh, manipulated by cult leaders and uh, you know, it was a huge gap between the first choice when they uh, really made and the result right. uh, where they ended up right. uh, in cult. And the most problem that people uh, couldn't reflect this change. Yep. So uh, because, because of uh, tactics of uh, mind control and mind control and manipulation, it's not uh, something like uh, hypnosis. It's not something, uh, some mysterious practice as many people think. It's just uh, usual practice, practice uh, when we can see from politician leaders and um, when we can find in any state, uh, frankly, but uh, the main difference is scale, scale. Of, of this uh, manipulation and consequences. Consequences, of, uh, right. Of, of manipulation. So, uh, and in cults, uh, first of all, I found the huge scale uh, on this, uh, of these manipulations, but many ways. Right. Uh, when people really didn't have opportunity to rethink the choice, even to reflect it, right. to, give, uh, to receive alternative information. And on the other hand, it was huge uh, destructive consequences. Right. Uh, but um, so I totally agree with you. Um, a formula of mind control, so behavioral control, information, uh, even language, uh, right. uh, uh, thought control, and so on. It's really many, many ways. But uh, the problem is what, uh, what I discovered, it's, it was a, a real surprise for me, that sometimes we don't need all components of mind control to manipulate uh, people effectively. What right. we can see in totalitarian states, in authoritarian states, because uh, unlike uh, some strict and firm small group, it's obvious that uh, some uh, complicated system doesn't have leverage 
to control people's behavior, for example, or totally forbid uh, opportunity to uh, get uh, alternative information. Of course, you can ban some sites, but you know, people have internet, people have VPN, they yeah, know VPN, how to... They can get around the firewalls. Yeah, the and and yes, uh, so it's, uh, we still have some options, but the problem is that people don't want to know the truth. Mm. And probably it's, it's, it's really something new. And uh, it's what happens, uh, happened in Putin's Russia. And unfortunately, it's happening now here in the US that uh, it's very painful, especially for me. So what we can see with uh, Putin's ideology, uh, uh, that um, first of all, it's an image of enemy. Yeah, uh, it's, vivid it, it, enemy, a devil figure. Exactly. Right. Yes, uh, a foreign, uh, some foreign uh, threat, uh, United States, Ukraine. It's a plane on fears, like hatred of uh, phobias uh, and uh, of uh, images mm -hmm. which created by these fears. And uh, it's, it's not about even ideology. It's about mostly about feelings and uh, phobias. Fear, and one uh, thing yeah. that I learned was, uh, was about uh, active measures of Putin mm -hmm. and how it's not so much anymore about converting the enemy to your mm -hmm. way, but to disrupt them and disorient them and confuse them. It's one. It's conflict. one. Thing. You know, uh, we can we can uh, divide uh, some different groups of active measures. Uh, first, uh, and if we are talking about Russian propaganda, of course, we mean not only classic uh, uh, definition of propaganda, like uh, creation a positive image of your state, of your country, but we also include active measures. And some of them, yes, aim to disrupt and uh, disorient uh, the enemy, but some of them, uh, they, they want to convert, but not all your enemies, but some specific targeting groups. Uh -huh. I call it ideologies for expert. The uh -huh. problem is that current Russia doesn't have its own ideology. It's uh, some Western people create these uh, mistakes uh, because they, they consider, for example, Dugin as a Russian ideologist. Mm -hmm. But the problem is that a lot of Russians, that majority of Russians, don't know who Dugin is mm -hmm. uh, because uh, they, they never read uh, his books and they uh, have no idea about his theories. Uh, Dugin aims uh, specifically uh, Russian right-wing radicals and right-wing radicals on the West, European and, of course, Americans. Uh -huh. And it's paradoxical situation that Americans are far right know Dugin much better than ordinary Russian person. So just to uh, be clear, Dugin is an agent of Putin or not? So uh, Dugin, Dugin is uh, Putin's favorite ideologist. Ah, okay. So I just want to clarify yeah. this. But, but, uh, uh, but his ideology, it's not main Russian ideology, because Russian ideology is uh, some mix of images uh, taken from Russian past, first of all, Soviet past, yes. uh, for example, uh, cult of Stalin or cult of uh, the World War II, Russian version of uh, World War II, uh, the Russians called it Great Patriotic War. And these images really are meaningful for Russians, because every Russian right. family lost uh, its members in this war. It was a lot of suffering and sacrificing. It's, it's absolutely true. The problem is how Russian authorities use these images to justify uh, Russia's current foreign policy. Right. That's the main problem. So it's some mix of images in, inside Russia, and sometimes they contradict each other, and uh, Russians doesn't care because the main thing is feeling, feeling of uh, hatred toward enemies, and at the same time, um, they perceive Putin as the uh, only figure who uh, can protect them from this foreign um, enemies and to uh, restore. Uh, Russia as a great power.
Make so, Russia great again. <laughs> yes, yes. Something like oh, that. Yes, or oh, uh, stand, uh, stand up from knees, as the Russians yes. say. Uh, so, um, but they create specific, that's why they uh, are not um, uh, Russian influence uh, doesn't reduce to communism like it was in right. the past. Now Russian influ uh, Russia creates different ideologies for export for uh, different social groups. And uh, the funny uh, thing is that they could contradict each other sometimes. Yes. Because um, Russia creates uh, ideologies, for example, even inside a Russian community abroad for descendants of uh, the old white god. Yes. Uh, who escaped uh, Russia uh, during the Russian Civil War. Yes. And they will never uh, accept Soviet past and they uh, consider uh, so Soviet time as uh, an absolutely uh, absolute evil mm -hmm. and at the same time they create ideology uh, for um, uh, Russian uh, Russian immigrants who miss so, uh, the Soviet Union and who emigrated precisely because a Soviet Union was collapsed right. and uh, it's, it's sometimes ridiculous, ridiculous uh, theories how uh, Russia tries to justify Russian current foreign policy uh, in the eyes of these two social groups because uh, sometimes it's used absolutely opposite arguments. But it works because uh, all these uh, theories uh, they are built on the same structure, on the same algorithm. So, uh, first of all, Russia uses uh, something, so, some uh, things that people already believe in. For example, some uh, image of enemy uh, that uh, a specific group already adhere uh, mm -hmm. to this uh, image. And uh, they try to coincide, uh, try to uh, be pleasant and to be in line with people's views and expectation. Right. So they use uh, the, uh, some, some group's uh, beliefs. And then uh, they use sometimes the same image of enemies which uh, the group already has. For example, for... Um, extreme uh, left it's good uh, for anarchists it could be uh, government itself a source of all ills of all ills right. for nationalists it could be jewish conspiracy for right. religious fanatics it uh, could be image of uh, liberal antichrist and so on right. so and then uh, they accusing this image of enemy of all troubles uh, real and illusory troubles Right. And the most important point of these ideologies, they uh, create a connection. What uh, the Kremlins um, make between some phenomena and processes, what the Kremlin dislikes, and these enemies' beliefs and phobias. This is the main effective uh, kind of manipulation, just to connect a uh, real image of um, yeah. enemy right. and object of discredit, what, uh, how I call it, something right. that Kremlin wants to discredit. And uh, in this connection, uh, people uh, usually cannot reflect this kind of connection. So I'd like to say that I read Peter Pom Pomeratsov's mm -hmm. book. Um, I think it's... Uh, Nothing is true and everything is possible. Am I getting the title correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and the takeaway for me was that um, he said everything is a construction to mm -hmm. make it look like yes. that there's freedom and there are all these different I... groups. But in fact, everything is manipulated from the top from the main, the main problem that putin really believes in it yeah he believes that it's no absolute truth yeah. 
that it's no absolute values. He really believes that all talking about democracy and human rights is just a cover for the United States to uh, create some orange revolutions to destabilize the world and to uh, justify its foreign invasions, for example. Right. And that. uh, so that, that's first of, uh, of his real points. So sometimes he doesn't, uh, he doesn't want to um, convince people that uh, Russia is right. Uh, he doesn't want to convince people that Russia has its real democracy or rule of law, something like that. He never tried. He just wants to uh, per uh, persuade people that uh, other countries also don't have it. Right. And Russia probably uh, the most honest country because they at least openly admit that everything is fake. Mm -hmm. But other countries try, uh, continue uh, to deceive the people and to manipulate them, and uh, that's why it's it's one it's one of his goals. As I said, we can uh, divide uh, different groups of Russian propaganda. Some of these just a uh, creation of positive image of Russia. Some. Uh, Part of Russian propaganda aim to just to for this uh, disorientation. They don't want to convince people in anything. They just want to um, kill um, a possibility, uh, just an ability of critical thinking. Because if uh, if people believe that nothing is true, they stop to find the truth. Right. And, uh, and and if I may just say, you know, for me, studying mind control cults, it's all about power. It's you know, everything, yeah. Power, money, and sex in the end. Mm -hmm. and, and, and these apex predators, these malignant narcissists, which I believe Putin is a malignant narcissist, as I believe Trump yeah. Is a malignant narcissist. Uh, the, problem, the, the problem with uh, Putin is that in the United States we have at least still have some system of check and balances. Yes. And Trump, uh, he also uses the same um, the same tactics. Uh, for example, uh, about uh, this connection, probably you remember Mueller investigation. Mueller, of course. Uh, yes, and uh, probably... I read the Mueller report. I'm one of the few <laughs> Americans who actually read the entire thing. Oh, congratulations. And, and, and the Trump supporters call it Russia hoax, and that um, nothing was found in the Mueller report about Russia. Uh, if, if you remember even before Mueller report, uh, it was indictment uh, that uh, specifically mentioned uh, specific Russian names, people who created fake accounts, who uh, worked under the false flag, under American identities, uh, how they spread uh, disinformation. And uh, this indictment mentioned uh, exact forms of disinformation. So yeah. everything was found, actually. But uh, you know, uh, you know that many Trump supporters they still have uh, remember the Cold War and they have a phobia against communism. Uh, communism. I don't justify communism. I am not a communist at all. But right. they are Russian uh, and Trump propaganda successfully connected Mueller report and uh, they presented it as a part of communist collusion. Yep. So uh, they made several uh, fake connections. For example, they labeled all uh, Trump opponents as communists. It's not true because yep. Trump opponents are very different people of different views. Some of them are moderate demo uh, Democrats, some of them more so socialist Democrats, some of them are not Democrats at all. It's right. part of the Republican Party. Some of them don't have any uh, political preference and they're just security experts who consider uh, Trump as a threat to national security. So there were a lot of different people with different arguments. And uh, of course, it's not an even uh, left part of Democratic Party. They are not communists uh, in, uh, in, in, in our view. 
yes yeah. in in russian uh, view so in russian terms so uh but uh, the connection was that it's uh, some kind of collusion of a deep state collusion against Trump, and this uh, deep state collusion is financed by some I don't know world government, right. and this uh, this world government are ruling, is ruling by communists, and all of this is communist collusion, leftist collusion. So uh, and of course these people are have a huge fear against communists and leftists and when Mueller report was connected to this phobia of course they um rejected it it, uh, yes yeah no of course and i want to just state and i want to make sure we cover this in our in our talk today um Mm -hmm. that there is no illegal act of collusion and Mueller said that in his report that they're looking for behaviors that are inappropriate, illegal, <laughs> and not the word collusion that was never part Yes, yes. Of- it, uh, it's very hard to find real collusion because it's everything um, about, but, but e- never, it's all about evidence. It's but they all- never brought Trump in uh, under oath to mm-hmm. actually be interviewed. They did a list of questions and even mm-hmm. with Roger Stone's uh, uh, with with all the f- the subsequent investigations, it, 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 Trump lied, apparently, according to what uh, Stone testified about. But I want to get off on the subject. What I really wanted to mm-hmm. say and ask you to comment on is that the phenomenon that I see oh, uh, so much of of people who believe so much in Trump and maybe they're queuing on. Mm. other things but they are so pro-russia or at least russia has nothing to do with what is happening uh because because they believe trump because trump behaves uh, as a real uh, real cult leader so they don't consider his statements critically mm-hmm. and if he said that uh, Russia has nothing to uh, to do with it. Of course, they believe him, especially if they uh, admit uh, Russian interference. They have to admit that Russia tried to help Trump, right. and and it's uh, entail some questions why. Right. Yes, so it's uh, it poses some very uncomfortable questions. Right. And uh, but with uh, as as we uh, when we talked about destructive consequences with Putin, why I started to uh, study uh, uh, propaganda instead of cults, because um, I discovered that consequences of uh, totalitarian states could be the same as cults, but e- e- even uh, even worse, because uh, probably you heard about Russian and Ukrainian war. Yes. So, uh, and Russian propaganda, uh, Russian propaganda kills, because they uh, persuaded people that uh, Ukrainians are fascists, uh, that it's the main threat to Russia, that they betrayed Russia, that they uh, planned uh, genocides against uh, Russian language people. You know that the most part of Ukraine is controlled uh, by Ukrainian authorities. There are no genocides, no concentration camps, nothing right. like this. So, but it was a lie, and people who believed in this lie, they went to the east part of Ukraine, and they killed, and they died. For nothing. So um, I don't tell even I don't mention uh, dist- uh, destruction of families because almost all Russians uh, have relatives in Ukraine yeah. and so many connections between relatives and friends were broke up absolutely uh, in uh, 2014, in the beginning of Russian and Ukrainian war. And I don't mention repressions in Russia and uh, repressions just for sharing alternative information. For example, for example, even for reposts in social network. So um, uh, we can see uh, repressions, control of information, and manipulation, which leads to uh, people's deaths and uh, destruction of families. So yes, it's exactly the same consequences as cult, 
uh, do. But the problem is that uh, if it's a government, it has some repressive machine, sure. uh, repressive apparatus, and you know that many people just uh, 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 imprisoned just because they expressed uh, the disagreement with the Russian foreign policy and some journalists was, uh, were killed. And the problem is with cult, cults and Russia that uh, a problem of cults really exists. Yes. And, but uh, the problem is that uh, two uh, cults um, cannot uh, coexist in the same area. Right. <laughs> So, uh, well, Putin, because the Putin political has, cults want to wipe out everybody else that's a threat to their of course, power. Of course. Uh, everyone, especially cults, uh, are very effectively in mind control. So if a person is a cult member, he's not susceptible to official Russian propaganda. It's, right. uh, it's really a really funny uh, contradiction because if you believe in cult ideology, you c and if cults I, uh, I, cult ideology contradicts to official Russian propaganda, yeah. of course, uh, totalitarian states um, uh, considers this person as a threat, not because of his rights, not because of his family, not because uh, right. it was to save uh, his children from uh, his uh, some dangerous choice, but uh, ju just because it's a competition. No, I agree. And it's the same with Falun Gong in the Chinese government. Yes, they absolutely. absolutely. Falun Gong is a threat. And, and but the problem with uh, cult studying in Russia is that even uh, cult studying uh, became uh, a tool for Russian authorities right. in, in, this, in this competition. So I, can, I could criticize cults uh, just for concealing information from people. Uh, and preventing uh, them to make a, a conscientious choice. But um, I never uh, was agree with any kind of repressions. Unfortunately, right. it's uh, a real repressions against regular witnesses, against yeah, other... I'm against uh, banning, by the way. Yes, it's, it's, not banning. It's, it's criminal cases against private persons. Yep. It's uh, it, probably sometimes if we have really destructive group like Aums in Rico, terrorist groups, uh, ISIS. And they were in we Russia. We can consider banning. Yes. Yeah, they were but in we, Russia. We cannot, we cannot prosecute a person if he is not a terrorist, if he right. didn't kill anyone or something Agreed. Like that. We're agreed on that. I wanted to also share that I realized in researching my book, The Cult of Trump, the power through RT, TV, and other media sources to Russian emigres who yeah. left Russia, but uh, they're still listening and believing. The problem is not RT, because RT uh, ta um, targeting an audience for RT is Western audience. But uh, Russian people, they, uh, they really watch Russian TV on Russian language. I see. It's, uh, it's available here, yes. And uh, they, uh, the problem is that Russian propaganda, internal domestic propaganda, is very cynical. Mm -hmm. uh, in Soviet time, you could uh, go to West and realize uh, uh, undeniable contradictions uh, between real situation in, uh, in the West and Soviet propaganda that people are not dying from hunger, they are not starving, they, right. uh, they can um, uh, live peacefully and uh, happy, uh, but, uh, and uh, they can see real uh, living standards, high living standards, sure. living uh, re real uh, lifestyle, American lifestyle, but now, uh, Russian propaganda doesn't uh, deny all these facts. That yes, they are rich, they are happy, it's uh, very beautiful there. We can see uh, the United States uh, on all Hollywood movies without traveling. We yeah. can uh, understand American lifestyle. We, we can read American press if we want. So, um, but 
uh, the main um, the main point of Russian propaganda in domestic propaganda is very uh, cynical. It's beneficial for us. Yeah. It's a cult of geopolitic. Yeah. So uh, that yes, they are rich, they are happy, but uh, they live such way because they just um, um, ruin other country mm -hmm. because they robbed other country because they. Because um, we're bad people. Yes, they're so bad. <laughs> so we. Right. If if you want to be a real Russian patriot, you can go there. You can use all benefits from living in the West. Yeah. Uh, but you know that they uh, got all of it because they destroyed um, other countries. They uh, want to destroy Russia. Yeah. They are our main enemy. So uh, you could use all the benefits. Right. and be loyal to Russia at the right. same time. They don't see any contradictions. Yeah, that makes for, a lot for, of them, for them, it's okay to uh, be loyal to Russia and to live on the West. Right. That's, that's, that's very dangerous because it's not only about uh, some misunderstanding or misinformation. It's about moral qualities. It's about some moral standards. You can understand everything, but uh, you can think that it's beneficial for Russia. It's possible um, to uh, refute such kind of propaganda, but refuting them, uh, you, refuting them you should understand that a simple fact checking is not effective. Right. Because, for example, if you want to uh, persuade persons that um, Russian troops really invaded Ukraine, he could know about it. He uh, possibly is uh, absolutely aware about it, but he will deny it because he thinks that it's, uh, um, it's beneficial for Russia, right. not to admit the fact. So what, what should you refute in this situation? You refute that the whole uh, Russian-Ukrainian war was not beneficial for Russia at all. And this is the point you should focus on. on, on yeah, it's about Putin. attention and okay. directing people yes. to where Putin wants people's attention. So it's, it's very important to understand because people believe and they want to believe. And it's, it's really was a surprise, I think, for both of us that you don't need all components of mind control. You uh, need just successfully play on some of them. Well, and, and I realize and that, we will have the same result. And I realize that, you know, when I was in the moon cult, mm -hmm. people were being brought to isolated locations to be indoctrinated. Mm -hmm. Now people are sitting at home on the Internet with their cell phones, getting notifications all the time. Yeah. And it's affecting them. You don't need physical isolation at all. You don't need because you, you create your own isolations because you are uh, internet technologists and you own uh, preferences create a bubble around you. Exactly. And this bubble creates uh, perfect information. Right. So you control your own behavior according to the beliefs that you've been in. in, in Absolutely. In but, you know... Uh, Anyway, you were absolutely right in your book that sometimes we have anyway elements of uh, behavioral control. For example, in Russia, it's repressions, effective uh, repressions mechanism. In, uh, here in the United States, we have some small organization, uh, FEMA, then uh, just uh, uh, all... Uh, Trump supporters and uh, this uh, this small organization they uh, have some uh, for example religious group and yeah. you know it's a, a real uh, connection because uh, Russian radical uh, right and American radical right for example extreme right American organization the League of South uh, created a section in Russian language by the way it's pretty good Russian uh, about a couple of years ago on the website, they declared Russian as uh, friends. And uh, you know that uh, some, um, many other American radicals have 
real connections with Slavic browsers, uh, traditionalist Yas network, traditionalist workers party, some other groups connected mm -hmm. with Dugin and some radicalized ideologies, for example, with Russian imperial movement, by the way, it was declared as a terroristic organization here in, in the US. So, and of course they share uh, conspiracy theories, for example, QAnon. QAnon uh, it's classic American conspiracy series, uh, theory, but I was surprised to discover uh, videos created on Russian language uh, on absolutely based on American facts. It was American news, American conspiracy series uh, translated into Russian. Uh, and it uh, sounded even more ridiculous than in American version. Uh, that uh, yes, uh, it's uh, there is uh, some cult, uh, religious satanist cults of criminals and pedophiles uh, that rules all the world. Some just one world government, um, and Trump the only person who opposes opposes this uh, world government with some alliance of. Uh, positive military force. I don't know who they are. Uh, so, and... Um, but Russians have, actually believe that. Uh, no, no, the problem no. is that uh, Russian mainstream media will never spread such theories because these theories combined with this uh, fears against vaccination and of this legend about uh, Bill Gates who tried to uh, implement microchips uh, undercover right. vaccination. And these theories are also dangerous for the Russian government because the Russian government also has uh, huge problems with coronavirus right. and they need people to accept vaccination when, uh, oh. when it will be developed. So first of all, and second of all, you know, it's a, a high level of jealousy inside cults, and Putin would never allow uh, to create a cult of Trump uh, right. inside Russia. He could, uh, some Russian analysts really, in the, even in open media, they admitted that Trump acted in their interests, and they praised uh, Trump for some of his actions, especially uh, for his quarrel with our allies, European allies and NATO. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but they never create a cult of Trump, especially cult which could uh, be a competitor with Putin. So uh, you cannot see this series on Russian mainstream media. On Russian mainstream media, America, uh, the United States is evil. Some, some of Russian propagandists make some differences between American deep state and Trump. Some of them even don't make this difference. And for them, America, Trump, and everything is the same. It's, it's, it's an evil, uh, so uh, an enemy. These theories were uh, dismissed, um, were spread uh, especially inside uh, right-wing radicals in Russia. In Russia, it's orthodox radicals, mostly. Mm. Uh, not uh, in, uh, in... Russian Orthodox in, Church? Or? Russian Orthodox Church, exactly. Mm -hmm. In uh, Not all Russian Orthodox Church, as just some part of it. Yeah. Uh, here in the United States, uh, some Protestant church, uh, charismatic church. Yeah, I wrote uh, about that. <laughs> and here, such kind of conspiracy theories are uh, susceptible for them. So, and they uh, have uh, connections. You know that uh, it, it's funny because inside Russia, Russian government fights against uh, charismatic groups, but uh, at the same time, I found um, some exclusive uh, uh, court testimony of one Russian guy, he was accused by the FSB uh, in spreading drugs, he never did it. Mm -hmm. uh, Nikolai Kaklugin, 
and uh, he was a, a, a some radical uh, um, uh, cults fighter who who really uh, believed that uh, cults are destructive and cults are a tool of American influence yeah. uh, on Russia. Probably it was uh, many years ago, but Russia effectively changed uh, this in, uh, tool against the United States and fighting back. I see. Using the same tool because uh, he, uh, in his testimony, he described how uh, the FSB created such kind of organization in uh, FSB headquarters on Lubyanka. He himself brought a Protestant pastor to Lubyanka to yes. his uh, FSB handlers, and his FSB handlers ordered him to help to create this uh, charismatic organization. Oh, that's so and, interesting. And only when they accused the own agent, he tried to um, uh, prove his innocence. And trying to prove his innocence, he revealed all this plan. Oh. And now we have evidence, we have unique uh, testimony from a person who participated in oh. this plan. And now it's not only our speculation, it's real testimony wow. from Russia. Right. Uh, court testimony and uh, you know yes so it's a huge connections and these connections are also supervised uh, by by the FSB and uh, I, the I FSB did... used to be the KGB correct yes it's, uh, it's a time. version of uh, he was Russia. a KGB agent correct and he recruited people he was, he was an agent he was an officer officer KGB. yes it's, officer. It, 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 it's one works yeah, yeah. so uh, and uh, but some pastors yes I believe that they are agents yeah. and uh, at least we we have at least one testimony yes about interesting it. So uh, I want to ask you three things, if I may, before we just have a few minutes left. Yeah, to, uh, that, that's the last sentence that about uh, this queer non conspiracy series. Yes, so I believe that they were um, created especially for expert for American audience, not for Russia. Okay. And it's it's absolutely true because uh, Russian um, some religious a part of religious immigration here in the United States, Russians uh, speaking religious immigrants, they really uh, picked up these series, and you know uh, they were leaders of protest actions against quarantine during the midst of epidemic of coronavirus in Sacramento, for example. And we have the same series, not, not only the same series, some, sometimes the same images, uh, pictures, uh, memes that were translated directly uh -huh. from uh, Russian to to English, and sometimes I see uh, this uh, coincidence not only in religious groups, but even in radical Republican propaganda. Yes. So uh, I don't know. It, it looks like it's uh, these connections and exchange of stuff um, uh, goes uh, goes on uh, many levels. Am I correct in assuming also because Putin and Russia has so much fossil fuels and oil that they also contribute to global climate change as a hoax or not? Yeah. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, uh, in Russia, people also don't believe that uh, climate change, uh, in, in reality of climate change, of course. But the problem is we talked a lot about American rights far right. But uh, for American uh, far left, radical left, Russia doesn't have its own, uh, doesn't have its own ideology for export. And, but it doesn't mean that Russia doesn't use them. Russia uses the, these people just mostly under a false flag. Uh, it tries to radicalize this protest action and to create, uh, to, to create a picture to push off people from a uh, democratic party, to uh, convince people that all democratic party reduced to this radical, it's not true. And um, of course, they use every, uh, and the problem is, another problem, probably the most, what people should understand, that Russia cannot create problems. 
it uses problems which already exist. So it's also a dangerous mistake to reduce all American problems to Russia influence I, because I Russia cannot create them, just uses, effectively uses. So yep. the main thing that uh, American authorities should do is try to unite society and try to solve its problems. Right. Because otherwise, enemies will use these problems again and again. Yeah, and racism in particular in the last few weeks is, I'm sure, being used uh, in, in Russia to, uh, or what, what is being said in Russian? Uh, in Russia, yes, in Russia it's funny because uh, Russian propagandists also divided some of them uh, support protesters. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, this narrative that, yes, it's a huge abuse from police, it's really some kind of abuse. Yes? Mm -hmm. And uh, no one uh, listens to these people, no one protects them. For example, Margarita Simonian, uh, editor and chief of RT, in the beginning of process, she gave this narrative. Uh, other people, like Alexander Malkevich, they mm, uh, um, uh, they support Trump, they support uh, um, um, uh, some strong measures against uh, protesters, but both sides, both sides were very happy what's going on in the US, and both uh, sides express hope that now uh, the United States uh, will uh, less interfere in the Russian affairs, so they consider it ah. as a karma and revenge. But very interesting point, uh, one of um, uh, participants of uh, a popular Russian talk show evening with uh, Vladimir Solovyov, it's top Russian propagandist on stage TV. Uh, this person, Bagdasarov, uh, his last name, uh, he openly said, I, I'm trying to translate from Russian now, that now for us it's a unique situation. We should use what is going on in the US. If the Soviet Union existed, uh, he that would be representative of national uh, national liberation movement uh -huh. from New York, Minnesota, here in Moscow, and we would ask them, "What do you need? Money? You're welcome. How much do you need?" Wow. It's exact translation from from Russian state TV. So of course they don't uh, they they don't. Um, uh, hide that they, uh, it, it, it's a great situation for them to interfere, but I think we should wait for real evidence, uh, like Mueller, uh, like in Mueller reports, real data, because yeah. yes, Russian propaganda uh, try to uh, doesn't hide that. So I need to <laughs> ask you about uh, guns and the NRA and Putin and whether or not my guess that Putin would really like armed conflict in the streets in the United States. Or sure, not. sure. And exactly uh, when I, we talked about ideologies for expert and uh, we slightly uh, touch a topic of refuting them, it's also uh, one of um, effective way to refute such kind of ideologies to uh, show people uh, contradictions between uh, an image that Russia tries to create and realities in Russia. It will be never allowed uh, possession of guns inside Russia. Russian government is afraid of uh, even not students, even pupils, school children in, in protest action. And they uh, imprison people um, for solitary protest action. That's so uh, interesting. And, but, but they support, support uh, free gun possession inside the United States. Of course, of course, they are interested in, for example, what uh, Maria Butina did here. It was also classic ideology for expert because it's impossible to be real uh, gun lobbyist in Russia and to have uh, such uh, high level connections with Russian government because in Russia it's opposition idea. Uh, she, uh, if I'm remembering you, forgive me for interrupting, but she went to the national prayer breakfast and yes. Russian agents or there were other Russians invited to the 
the the national we, we see we see two classic channels yeah um religious channel and uh, infiltrated by Russians and uh, NRA, of course, because uh, Maria Butina is not only one and Torshin is not only, is only one Russian NRA member. Okay. And uh, yes, it's it, it's also kind of, I, I, I know others, I just don't want to name them because probably it could be a criminal case, who knows, uh, let's wait. But uh, yeah. anyway, it's, uh, it's not the only one, of course. And a uh, third channel, it's uh, corrupted Russian oligarchs mm -hmm. and money. Um, and all these channels uh, create communication uh, which uh, facilitate uh, exchange of propaganda theories and yeah. tactics. Yeah, but, but it's... Uh, probably, probably for American radical rights will be interesting real situation in Russia because they, uh, they support uh, free gun possession. They support um, uh, 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 some decreasing of state power and increasing of uh, local powers, but in Russia it's also impossible. So interesting. So in Russia they will be in jail for separatism during the one day. That, the, the movement yeah. wouldn't uh, wouldn't survive in Russia even uh, e even a couple of days. I guess. That's so interesting. There's so many things that you've enlightened me on. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I really appreciate <laughs> talking with you, and I appreciate your willingness to be courageous and speak about Putin and, you know, he kills people who he is, doesn't like. Two of my friends actually killed. Investigated you, knew, you know, per, knew personally were murdered? Uh, they are my close, they were my close friends. Oh my goodness. Alexander Shitinin and Maxim Baradin. Mm. And, and you are um, friends with Gary Kasparov, is that true? I don't, I don't call friends, we, uh, we don't know each other closely, but I am one of speakers oh, of this organization. And as a speaker, as a participant, of course, uh, we know each other. Yeah. Not closely, I, but we I grew up that. playing chess and of course <laughs> he, he was uh, such a champion and when he started speaking for democracy mm -hmm. and and critical of the regime, uh, he became a hero of mine. Uh, and you're, you're a hero oh, too. Oh, oh, mine too. Yeah, it's so great. So any last thoughts as we wrap up mm -hmm. our, our uh, time together that you would like to say? Um, that people, first of all, should appreciate the, here in the United States the freedom they have. And for me, unfortunately, it's very painful to see that American elites, even from both sides, are prefer to divide people uh, in order to achieve some uh, temporal uh, political goals. And they don't care that uh, it's like a bomb under society. And of course, American enemies use and will use these contradictions, even radical left. They also, uh, when they, they give uh, by some destructive parts of their behavior, they yeah. give uh, Putin leverage to use them, even yeah. unconsciously. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, all, all these contradictions make make Russia happy. Yes. Uh, because because Putin really believes that all Russian problems are created in the United States by the United States. And does he actually believe that, or he's telling actually, the people that? Actually, actually, because it's a Czechist mind. Uh -huh. uh, Czechist, it's a uh, word for Russian security officers. He cannot believe that, pe uh, that people not objects, that people could be uh, persons, uh, that people could create something themselves, uh, that people also have the choice and desire. He, he believes that everything what is going on is paid and created by someone else. So it's my impression, I went to Moscow right after the Soviet Union fell to teach about cults to a group of psychiatrists and psychologists. 
And it was my impression that I was talking to people who were raised in a cult, in a political cult. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and so uh, some of my reflections are how, how can they have freedom if that's all they knew? Like how, mm -hmm. how yeah. to deprogram that mindset? And you just touched on uh, an es essential piece mm -hmm. that he was born in it. He was raised, Putin was thinking that, that way that, and that, he's still that, in that there. That scares me most of all because I was lucky. I grew up in other Russia. When I went to school, when I was seven, Soviet Union collapsed. I don't remember it. I know it from textbook. Yes. But, I, uh, but I don't remember it myself. And my childhood uh, was 19th. Mm -hmm. And then it's it's also was in next year in uh, 2000 years when I was a student. So I grew up and uh, graduated university in different yes. times. That's yeah. why it's so it's so hard for me to understand how people could believe in this. Yes. Yeah, no, it's true. And, you know, if I hadn't been in a mind control cult, I wouldn't understand the mindset either. Like, how could anyone think in so limiting a way and, or put people, someone people, on a pedestal? We, we underestimated this quality of human psychology that people um, believe in, they want to believe. Yes. And, and uh, I, for me, it's also uh, a mystery. If you saw something, how can you unsee this? But people have some ability to unsee, to well, forget. Well, the answer is perspective, you know, mm -hmm. for me, and teaching people about other cults where they can see, oh, yes, and then I break it down and explain the bite model and such, and then ask them questions to reflect on their own experience situation and how it's different from examples they would say for sure this is a bad mm -hmm. cult but what american elites should do you just try finally to unite its country and to solve real real american problems because foreign interference is just an indicator of yeah. real problems yeah they helped us to see to realize these problems. And now finally it's time to solve them and yes. not to give your enemy a, a leverage. It's also uh, because if we um, uh, will believe in uh, Russian threat and to reduce everything to foreign threat, it also will be a cult. It's not right. Not to believe, not to, not to see real problems, yeah. just to believe in some conspiracy. No, the world is much more complex and it's not yeah. a binary. It's not an all or nothing and things don't work linearly. Things work on many levels. That's, that's, that, that's probably the main problem when people prefer sculpt mind because it's very simple. It's, it's so very, simple. It's, it's, like it's, very it's like ch child level of, of, of thinking. It's not advanced where you have different perspectives and you can... But different perspective, it's also hard. Yeah, because because it's uh, because it's always temptation to feel yourself in morally unambiguous situation. Yeah, and to believe in your ideal moral choice. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's harder work to think than mm -hmm. to just follow. And with that, I'm going to need to end because we went yeah. over an hour. Thank you so very much Thank for you. your good your good work, and uh, I, I'm sure we'll do more conversations in the future. So thank you, and stay safe and stay healthy, please. Thank you so much. Okay.